Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, today is Friday and guess what? Tomorrow is Christmas Day. Praise God. Listen, like I told you yesterday, be in the mood of celebration. Don't let anything put your mind or your heart to sadness. No, 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 no. You don't need that. Get excited. We read it yesterday. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Praise God. That's why the Lord has commanded me to call for our daily bread. So let's do it right now. Are you ready? Say this with me. Say, Father, today I receive my daily bread and everything I need to have a wonderful Christmas. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Father, for this broadcast. I declare right now, burdens are being lifted, yokes are being destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for the miracles that will take place even today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Now listen, don't let anything make you sad. Nothing is big enough to get you into sadness. Not today, not for any day. Now, Satan will always throw things at you. But let me tell you something. Be in charge of your life. Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his soul? Funny enough, we, we have read that scripture for many years and thought he was talking about missing heaven. He wasn't talking about heaven. He was talking about losing charge of your soul. You aren't supposed to be in charge of your mind. You aren't supposed to be in charge of your soul. You are the one that is supposed to tell your soul, be joyful and remain joyful. And it will say, yes, sir. But when you get to that point where external influence is now what is controlling your soul then you have lost your soul so when jesus said lose his soul he is talking about lose being in charge of your soul and you don't want that to happen in your life so listen to me take charge the moment jesus came and rescued us and, and actually redeemed us from sin and death, from the devil and from God's judgment. That's all what Jesus did, praise God. The moment that was settled, brothers and sisters, you have been given the right to be who you want to be. You have been given the right to excel no matter how far you want to go. Nothing has the ability to hold you back. I'm telling you the truth. Except you don't believe. And that's the problem of God's children. Unbelief. Unbelief. I've never seen anyone who, anyone who will go before the Lord and say, Lord, and, and pray and seek his face and seek his wisdom concerning anything. And God will say, ah, this thing you're asking for is too much. I can't even do it for you. No, sir. He says, his word is yea. And in it, amen. Praise God. Now, that's why he calls us to understand him. If we understand him, then we become partakers indeed of his divine nature. And that is eternal life. Remember, we're talking about who is Jesus. And what Jesus came to do is to give us life. That was his mission. That was his main mission on earth. Not just on earth. That's his main mission of our existence. To give man life. And those of us who belong to him now, think about it. Why would he refuse you life? Those of us who have recognized that we are the ones he redeemed. Why would he refuse you life? I'm sharing this with you. You know why? Because it's time to begin to leave. It's time to begin to let eternal life walk in you. It's time to begin to let that very life that is in God. Now that's when you begin to understand what it means to be 
in God's image and be created after his likeness. Let me ask you a question. Does God get sick? Think about it. Imagine God saying to Angel Michael, ah, Angel Michael, the work we did today was too much. My head is aching me. Think about it. Now I said, does God guess? Ah, no, 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 no. Okay. You. He said he will make you in his image and after his likeness. Why do you get sick? Why is he okay? You know what I'm saying? Eh, well, body, body is not firewood. You know, people say those things. Meaning, look, you, you, hey, come on now. Come on. Yes, it's important to rest. Even God rested. See? It's important to rest. And let me tell you something about resting. Resting is mainly of the mind than of the body. When God rested, he didn't climb a bed and sleep. When the Bible said God rested, he took his mind off that work he was doing. As I mean, why did he take his mind off? Because it was done. He was done with it. Many of us don't know when to cease from working. Many of us don't know. So we don't understand what it is to rest. See? What we think rest is, is, ah, after I had this work, you go back home, you lie down on the bed. Even when you're lying on the bed, your head is still calculating how to fix this and how to fix that. But you need to come into that place of rest. And, and let me tell you something. Rest is for those who get, who, who, those who have eternal life working in them. That's what it means to be partakers of the divine nature. So those who have eternal life working in them, they are, they are the ones who know what rest is. Because the rest we're talking about is his rest. He says, enter into his rest. It's a labor to enter into his rest. Because anyone who enters into it has ceased from his own struggle. You may be lying on the bed thinking you're resting, but you are so worried about what you're going to do when you stand up from the bed. You are not resting. You are still in trouble. You are still laboring. And the wrong labor, I'm telling you. But he says, labor, in other words, study, pray, fast, get understanding. That's all labor. So that you will enter into God's rest. Because the moment you enter into God's rest, you cease from your own struggle. To enter into God's rest doesn't mean to become lazy. To enter into God's rest means you have found the path of life. You have found that rail where everything just begins to work. You found it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah. That's what it means to enter into God's rest. And that is what Jesus desires for every one of us. That is the practicality of eternal life. So when you say, oh, Jesus, I want eternal life, or I receive eternal life, that's what we're talking about. It's a life, number one, eternal life is a life that is fully, I mean fully, 100% controlled by the Holy Spirit. He regulates everything that you allow yourself to think, every word that you allow to come out of your mouth, he regulates it. Now, he doesn't just force it on you. You are the one that's, that know, okay, Holy Spirit, this thought I'm thinking. Now, what do you think about this? This thing I want to do, what do you think about it? And then, no, don't. And then, oh, okay. Doesn't matter what I feel. Doesn't matter what I think. Oh, no. Now, you remember when, when the, the rich, let me show you something now. Matthew. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 16. I'll show you something here. It says, Now behold, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So he said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one. That is God. But if you want to enter life, keep the commandments. He said to him, which ones? Now watch this. Jesus said, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. 
you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Did you see that? Think about this. Jesus said, Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you want to enter into life, pay attention to these things. Now, you know, someone will look at this and say, Jesus was telling him to keep the law. Hey, Jesus didn't tell him. Now, watch this now. Let, 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 let's look at it. Let's look at it from verse 18. Jesus said, you shall not murder. That's one. You shall not commit adultery. That's two. You shall not steal. Three. You shall not bear false witness. Four. Honor your father and your mother. Five, you shall love your neighbor yourself. Six. So Jesus gave him six laws that he must keep if he wants to live eternal life. Think about it. And Jesus didn't say, and the rest of them. So he wasn't referring. Because remember, he said to him, keep the law, keep the commandments. And the guy asked him, which ones? Meaning, which are the important ones I have to keep if I want to see life? And Jesus told him, don't murder. Don't commit adultery. Don't bear for, don't steal. Don't bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. Now, it's amazing that all these things Jesus listed, right? They are things that you're not paying attention to them may cause death in your life. And you paying attention to them will bring honor and, and longevity in life. Yeah. Now, but he was asking beyond living long. But these things will help you live long. Not observing these specific commandments can cut your life short. For example, when you murder, even the ground itself marks you out as a murderer. So surely, long life, you will not see. Then, he says, when you commit adultery, you're dealing with death. You're dealing with death. Then, when you steal, you see, stealing, that's robbing. People don't understand. When you, when, when you steal from someone, you just think, that, okay, I uh, just played a fast one on this person. You don't realize that on the long run, someone may even lose their life because of what you stole. Now, because you stole someone's money, now, someone who was supposed to, it's supposed to trickle down to pay someone's medical bill. It's supposed to trickle down to, you know, sort out somebody's life. And that didn't happen. So it leads to death. And then the next one he says, he says, bear false witness. You know what that means. You tell a lie against someone or you stand and say, yes, this is what happened when you know it's a lie. You don't deserve to leave because you're going to paint someone else black, bad. Now look at the next one. Honor your father and your mother. You know when, when Paul says, he says so that, in fact, when Moses gave this, he says so that your days may be long on the earth and that it may be well with you honor your father and your mother then he says love your neighbor as yourself now i'm trusting the spirit of god from next week we're going to take time to look at these things and i'll show you how they relate to life but then you know jesus knew at this time there is nothing to do for this man to receive eternal life. Because Jesus had to die, rise from the dead, and then enter into his real priestly ministry before he can give eternal life to us. But he stated these things. So next week I'm going to be showing you how important they are. And, and, and you will be blessed. Praise God. So listen, now, join us next week. Next week is going to be the last thing, the last week of the year. So don't miss any broadcast. And, and all the series we've done on who's Jesus, get it in 
and, and watch it and listen to it and the Lord bless you. Let me pray for you now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare that a miracle is taking place in your life right now. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, a miracle of provision is happening today in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, receive it now. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Merry Christmas once again. Have a beautiful weekend and celebration. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.